is that emergency plan the same thing well as- it, it, no they have act the what well, yes it is the same sort of thing there's two requirements okay so in the workplace health and safety legislation uh, there's a requirement to pay, plan for all emergencies everywhere but victoria okay now that came in it wasn't in the legislation prior to 2011 when we adopted it in west australia in 2022 so um, that's saying that uh, you know you've got a um, if we're here in townsville in queensland we've got a plan for cyclones okay so um, you know, depending on what the risk is, you know, uh, it, it, you've got to have it written down uh, with a bunch of other requirements uh, on how you act. Now, here in Queensland, um, so that's a requirement out of the workplace health and safety legislation. In Queensland, we've got the building fire safety regulation. So there's another requirement. So in workplace health and safety, it's, you know, you've got to have a plan for emergencies. And in building fire safety, you've got to have uh, a plan for uh, fire and evacuation. Okay, so in workplace health and safety, you could say fire is one risk. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I merged them both together. <clears throat> and with the WorkHub platform, uh, we can link all the instruction and all those sort of requirements and certifications and crap, everything into the one, um, one uh, um, tool. Uh, and then, of course, we support that if there was an issue uh, we can we can debate the fact with the regulator or or you know um, provide evidence or whatever. So you can see this one thing uh, a, a, a an evacu well the 3745 refers to it as an evacuation diagram. So this is the sign that goes on the wall, um, and in Queensland it refers to an evacuation sign that incorporates an emergency diagram. Same thing. Um, used for the same thing, but the interpretation um, uh, is different depending on on who you're consulting with. Um, yeah, so some people to. might call it an emergency plan. Some people might call it an evacuation diagram. Well, yeah, yeah, call it evacuation it's, sign. It's, yeah, I mean, here's an example. Um, yeah. It is uh, that we got recently. Uh, obviously, it's I've taken away any sort of reference to people. Um, but if I, if I show you that quickly, they've got emergency procedures there. So emergency procedures as a title to that tool, uh, in my understanding, has never existed. Now, an emergency procedure can be something written that's inside the written plan. So a document, a Word document, a PDF document that you print out and you can put a hard copy. In Queensland, you've got to ha- hold that copy uh, off-site, so it can be digitally, and a, and a physical hard copy um, in a, uh, a place that could be resisted to fire. Once upon a time, it used to be a fire safe. Now it can be a metal filing cabinet, for instance. And that's a requirement. Um, you know, compared to, um, um, you know, what we do, we, we do a very uh, a simplified version. We, we want it to be for what it needs to be used for. Um, and we can cha- we, we sort of change colours and stuff to suit the environment of the company. This particular company uh, has a green logo. Their logo has been taken off in their address just so I can give you a quick example. And this is what we've done as part of our service is we've had a look at their sign. Um, so remember our service being holistic with work up and all the rest of it, one part of being the sign. And then we've redrawn it uh, and we will send that to them in a stat frame so they can stick it up and work with them. Um, so that's just, uh, you know, the end result uh, on our drafting uh, service that we have that's, uh, you know, uh, part of um, the um, Safety Hut Studios, your lot, um, that uh, is uh, producing those for us now. So we're expanding out our service to make sure that it's holistic uh, and that we cover all these things. But, you know, it's, um, you know, this is what I, I've been doing all, all my life. Uh, you know, the contribution that, that you do in regards to uh, developing these things and asking the questions and getting to where we are, um, you know, has been a, a, a story on its own. And now we're here with this um, uh, podcasting facility uh, being able to pass on more information to the owner of the business um, to be able to um, 
uh, assist in their, their understanding of their requirements uh, and be more confident that they don't have to know everything uh, because our organisation, Safety Hut, uh, is on the job. Yeah, I, I think that takes a big headache away from these, these businesses as well, Bruce, because as you mentioned, one company might only service the extinguishers or provide extinguishers. One company might do these signs. And it would be, especially someone that's new to safety, they wouldn't un have that understanding of who to speak to and the different services and, and the different requirements as well. So I think having you know safety hut where everything's under the hut banner, so to speak, it, it yeah, it, it's, it seems very convenient, especially from, from my understanding, at least as an outsider to the world of safety. You've been educated like uh, our clients are at the moment uh, over the years. Um, where I'm sure on occasions uh, your eyes have glazed back, you know, with the Article B, Subsection Three, Paragraph Two, and you're just going, well, yeah, what, you know, uh, uh, you know, it takes. Um, I, I'm I'm very lucky to have had a diverse career. Um, and, you know, I'm not a, uh, as I said in the first podcast, a, a, an analyst or a, you know, or a uh, academic. You know, I come from hands-on, so so I've been on the receiving end, as in, yeah, you sent this paperwork out, but what does it mean? You know, so I click on the button uh, that I had to click and move on, um, not having even read it. Um, so over time, you know, I I, I I do know where it's relevant. I do know how the human's going to react. Um, a part of the problem, I believe, is you know, and I and I'm not sure whether this has ever been challenged is that if I want to start a business in Australia, and I presume New Zealand, uh, you know, I get my little model and say, let's pretend it's a lawn mowing business. Um, so I buy myself a, a uh, I've got my old um, uh, crew cab and I grab a trailer and buy a nice new um, right, on. Uh, right on and get the signs done and my business cards and the ABM, or yeah. if I'm a trading as, depending on what I choose to do, and off I go. Now, there's nothing uh, in in uh, an onboarding type setup that requires a business. You've got to have this. You've got to have the ABM. You've got to have that. You could go to accountants that can help you, bookkeepers that can help you. Um, and then when it comes to safety, the expectation is, is that you have to self-educate. You're obliged to consult. And the tools are there on websites. And 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 yeah, yeah, <laughs> and 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 you, and you can you can ring up, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, whether it's workplace health and safety in your state, uh, you know, return to work rehab site. You know, this is without touching fair work. The uh, you know the the um, you know HRE type regulatory body. Um, you know, and then you've got your work cover uh, in each each uh, state. Um, so yeah, yeah, and I uh, and I start my business. Uh, now that's fine if I'm just working for it. As soon as I take on a worker, and that worker gets injured, they chop a finger off or they twist an ankle, or, you know. And there's monies that need to go in. Look, you might cover it yourself, um, but say it becomes a lifelong injury for that worker. They twisted their ankle, and now they have a limp for the rest of their life. And somewhere down their track, that's affected their ability to get jobs or whatever. Um, they can make a claim. You know, so um, uh, so it's not the uh, the owner of the businesses, you know, their little business that they just started um, fault necessarily, even though they have these legal obligations. They might not know. And even if they did know where to go, they might not understand. And then the person they're talking to might confuse them with going Article B, Subsection 3, Paragraph 2. Brain turns off. I, I, I do lawnmowers, you know. I mean, yeah. now I've come yeah. across that. Everywhere from three people to forty odd people, you know, and even even higher that people don't have an understanding. In some cases, I've been asked to go and do one little thing. So let's say uh, do some training, and and I say, look, I don't do that, but I'm in, here in Townsville. I can actually go and see someone, uh, and I'll and I'll have a chat to them, uh, and they they just dismissive straight off. Oh, we got all that, got all that. We just want training, but I can I can see that they're evacuation sign is stick drawn and stuck to the wall with blue tack you know yeah. where, where it has to be permanently affixed to the wall in queensland 
Um, so I, I just always apologise for wasting their time, take my business card back, and and uh, and, and and leave them to what they're doing. Now they may have their their um, business for their entire business career and nothing ever happened. Uh, yeah, so but that, that's the impression, isn't it, Bruce? That a lot of businesses are winging it, it seems, and they're just getting by on luck with when it comes to safety and yeah, WHS. Because it's confusing and expensive. That that's the problem. You know, if 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 I I'm a safety guy, I come around now. If I was running my consultancy, where you know I was, um, you know, getting people compliant to standards, and it's an exorbitant amount of money. They're probably people have probably seen the ticks that people get for. Um, you know, safety, quality, and environment, and then there's something else. Um, you know, that's complying to to, to a particular Australian standard, or international standard, actually, um, and it's looked on as best practice, which it probably is. So obviously, uh, everybody's using it, um, and it's great to have those sort of tools. But they tend to be up in the big end of town. Um, that doesn't take their responsibility away from complying to legislation, though. Um, so when you're looking at that particular legislation. Um, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember because uh, I don't use it. Um, that uh, I, I'm aware of it, I, I'm, uh, but um, it doesn't, uh, as I remember, uh, comply to the building fire safety regulation. So the obligation to give instruction. Where's the evidence of that? It might comply to 3745. Um, so, um, but you know, depending on the auditor, you know. So there's there's people that. Um, I hold the lead auditing qualification, but uh, I generally do uh, basic audits on my clients. So, which is uh, based on the legislation. Uh, I'm not particularly interested uh, in the ticks. Um, yeah, I think you're, it seems just from our experience working together, Bruce, you seem to be a real asset because you've got that world, that kind of that real world experience of you know many years in the, in the industry that you can kind of see these things and, and you have that. Also, the the legal understanding behind you know, the, the behind the, the actions of, of what needs to be done to be compliant. Yeah, so, um, it it's um it's it's the it's why hey safety hut is a game changer. We look at things in 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 a different light, um, and so our projection, our business plan for everybody's information is basically to break up all that knowledge uh, into people and services. Uh, so onboarding someone will be a great experience where we're looking at uh, you know things like evacuation signs and making sure they're compliant. Uh, uh, you know, you don't get um, charged extra money for us doing that. But depending on the size of your, of your business, is uh, and that's not a cookie-cutter type pricing, we'll have a look at your business and work with you, um, is all cost affordable. It's all in the, in the first instance. That's... Uh, when we put your uh, get your onboarding videos together, so all your safety and work health safety uh, ones, uh, you know, are, are, um, are um, branded to your company, um, and uh, doing your um, video procedures and this, getting all those modules up and running for your company is a long term commitment. So in the first instance, we show our commitment to your company by um, uh, doing all this. Uh, work that is normally uh, extra or, or charged for. In some cases, they, they'll help you set up uh, and then charge you later. Um, as we work with you, if you need a safe work net met method statement for some reason, um, we will source it, um, make it relevant, uh, put your logo and your change the your name in it and provide it to you. In a lot of cases, uh, we can just put it on, on Safety Hut Oh, sorry, on, on Work Hub and uh, have it available to all your staff anyway. So, yeah, uh, I think this is an important point, Bruce, because when dealing, if a business comes to Safety Hut, they've got a comprehensive solution and they don't have to worry about any of that headache of the, the legislation or the, the acts and the regulations and you know, even where to put the sign. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Hut YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. 
For more in-depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.